invite you to hear these words from the book of Exodus. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. The angel of God who was going before the Israelite army moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove back the sea by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Here ends our scripture lessons for this morning. May God add a blessing to the reading and to the hearing of these holy words. And will you pray with me? Compassionate creator, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our minds and our hearts bring us into deeper relationship with you, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, what a joy it is to be back together here in this room for worship. As I mentioned, a lot of planning went into how we're going to worship this fall. And thanks again for those who helped and are helping with those decisions. But there's an even bigger question beyond that. And that's this. How are we to be the church in this current environment? I mean, even before the pandemic, there were worrying signs that we live in a society that no longer views church as a priority. And that trend continues. And then on top of that, we're still working our way through this Pandemic. It's a total double whammy. So what is the role of the church in this day? How are we to be the church in these times? I know I've just started this homily, but I'll get right to the chase. The bottom line is this. Our responsibility is the same as it always has been, which is to expect to be with God in powerful ways every time that we're together. To expect to be with God in powerful ways every time that we're together. It doesn't matter if we're inside or outside or online. We should expect, expect to be with God in powerful ways every time that we're together. And out of that, out of that is revealed the core of our faith, which is trust. Now, you may say that that's kind of hard to come by these days, trust. The science around COVID is changing rapidly. Job responsibilities are altering. Things just aren't as predictable as they once were. So trust God? Trust God? That's, that can be a tough one. But you know what? You trust more often than you think you do. I mean... If you're driving into Boston uh, on 93 or up to New Hampshire or some, on the highway, right? You're driving next to people only a few feet away who are driving 70 or 80 miles an hour. Only a few feet away. You are trusting. You're trusting your life to complete strangers. You're trusting that they will, every second, make the right decision. Because in one microsecond, it's all over. So you do trust in more circumstances than you think. Now, if you know nothing about the book of Exodus, you know this scene, right? Because we've all seen Charlton Heston act it out, right? In the Ten Commandments. The story of the Hebrew people crossing the Red Sea, or being led out of Egypt toward the Red Sea. 
And they're led by a man named Moses. Now keep in mind, these people didn't really know Moses that well, because there were a lot of them, and or why he was doing this really. He'd been away for a while. He shows up kind of suddenly again and declares that he's Hebrew and that God's called him to lead the people out of slavery to a new place, to a new place, a place of blessing, a place of promise. So they go, they go. They're not even sure where they're going, but they go. They put their trust, their trust in Moses as a messenger of God. Now that trust falters, falters actually quite a lot on this journey, not least because what, a, what should have been a two-week pilgrimage from Egypt to Jordan ends up taking 40 years, but that's another sermon. And one of those times when the people were confused, when they were unsure, God said to Moses, tell the Israelites to go forward, to go forward. And they did. Now, it's tough to move forward when we don't have an end in sight. It's tough to move forward when you don't exactly know where you're going. It's tough to move forward and all you really have to rely on is the providence of God. But that's where the Israelite people, the Israelites were. And that's where we are as a church today. But it's so important in that context to remember that we are part of something much bigger, much, much bigger than we even realize. The generation that crossed that Red Sea was not the same generation that entered the Promised Land. Many generations have gone before us here at First Congregational Church, and many, many will come after us. Our job is to do our part, to be our link in the chain, to pass the baton forward with more energy and more hope and more love than it, when it was hand it off to us, even if we don't exactly know what comes next. And there's the rub, right? Because we human beings, we fear that more than anything else, don't we? Not knowing what comes next. But here's the thing. Faith and risk go hand in hand. Faith and risk go hand in hand. Two sides of the same coin. Jesus said that you can't pin down the Holy Spirit. You don't know where it comes from. You don't know where it's going. It's unexpected. It's unpredictable. It's unplanned. And you belong to it. It's like a, like a wind that fills the sails of our ship and sweeps us up into the waves of life. And when you surrender to that, when you surrender to that, when you, when you trust that, your life changes. Our church changes. We ride those waves and we walk forward in faith. And we take risks. And we trust. We trust that God will show us the way and bring us to that new land. Because the church, our church, every church, is in the midst of its own exodus. We're being led to a new place, a new way of being the church, new ways of worshiping, new ways of ministering, a new beginning, a new beginning. Now, we can fear that. We can fear that that's happening. Or we can be filled with an awe and excitement at what new thing God is unfolding in our midst. And this year, I'm going to make sure that we choose door number two the door of trust. Like the Israelites, we have to trust God enough to see what comes next, to see what will happen. When those Israelites stepped into that Red Sea with the walls of water on each side, they couldn't see the other side. They didn't know that they would make it. They couldn't see where they were going, but they didn't wait. They didn't wait. They didn't wait until they had the big picture. They didn't wait until they knew where they would end up. 
or what it was like on the other side of the Red Sea, what it would look like there. But they had the courage to take that first step forward together. And so will we. Stepping forward into this Red Sea of of COVID-19 and wildfires and droughts and floods and hurricanes and disinterest in religion, and we'll do so on dry ground with an abundance of trust in God. Because the church does not exist to keep us cloistered and protected from the world. The church exists as an expression of the dynamic force of that Holy Spirit active in the world, and that spirit is on the move. It's on the move. Now, only God knows what our destination will be, and that's okay. That's okay. But we can't just hug the shore because a new day does await us, and this church will thrive. What we need now, most of all, as we enter into this new program year, is simply this, a spirit of adventure. Let us pray. Oh God, this is a challenging time for our church and for every church. Through faith, we know that every journey to a new place has its challenges. We are ever confident, O oh God, that you are with us and that just as you guided the Israelites through the Red Sea, so too will you guide our church to a new day. Bless each person here and those who are with us in spirit, for whether we are together or apart, we are all your people and disciples of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Confident in God's love. Reveal to us in Jesus Christ. We, the First Congregational Church in Melbourne. United Church of Christ. Journey in Christian community. To seek God's presence and, and share God's word. We live our faith by worshiping and learning together. Sharing our gifts and talents. Identifying and ministering to human needs. And working for peace and justice. For all people in our community and in the world.